Scottish Tories have been heavily criticised for their lack of engagement in the Brexit debate, their low role in being able to help mitigate the damage that Brexit will clearly do to the Scottish economy. But I think it's important to find the sources, the origins for why the Scottish Tories have this position. Really it has its roots in what Ruth Davidson has consistently been saying after the Indy Ref, as well as in the run-up to several Scottish elections. This sees Scotland trying to re-emerge within the context of a new Britannia, an empire 2.0. In the view of Scottish Tories, they want to bring back the idea of Scotland as an invention of Britain, uh, having its role as the loyal lieutenant of the British Empire, the new empire made up mostly of arms trade deals to the Middle East, as well as poorly negotiated trade deals in Asia. A bright new future in which Scotland will play a loyal, submissive role, a sort of backup uh, in a new Raj all over the globe. And of course it has its roots in the idea of Scotland being uh, involved in a shortbread stratagem, uh, marketing a kitsch Scotland. Whiskey, shortbread, golf, stag hunting and resorts. Nothing much to do with a new vision of Scotland that the Scottish Government has been trying to pursue of renewable energy or life sciences or the idea of having a positive role in the world via being part of the European Union, reforming the European Union as well as peacekeeping and a drift away from militarism. This return to the imperial role of Scotland as the loyal lieutenant to the rest of the UK in forging imperial uh, reputations based on militarism, strength and bullying and the rebuilding and uh, reforging of the Atlantic Bridge heavily influences Scottish Tory thinking. But the Scottish Tories aren't completely isolated. They do represent a certain strain within the Scottish population that really is more authentically conservative than anything you'll find on the British Isles. They want to be left alone, they want a Scotland which is submissive and knows its role within the context of that settled union. And really, this idea of a limited vision of Scotland's role in the world, where Scotland at best becomes the unlistened to conscience of a more liberal UK, really can't be solved by an independence referendum. Hard work has to be done to lay the grounds for a new culture, a new way of thinking about Scotland's role in the world, an active Scotland which seeks to reform the way it is seen around the world and enhance its image, which is already positive. Uh, a Scotland which comes to terms with its role historically in terms of empire, but also seeks to build on that renewed vision of itself. And really it has to come down to civil society, Scottish government, members of the media, and also citizens striving to have new conversations about Scotland's role when it comes to geopolitics, taking examples from Norway, from Switzerland, from countries in Latin America, new engagement with African countries. Scottish Tory support rests on a sizeable section of the Scottish population and Scottish culture which doesn't have that ambition. This doesn't mean that people are bad or foolish. It's just a question of how we perceive ourselves. For so long Scots have been told that they don't really deserve to be uh, people who are influencing decisions at the top table. And that at that top table there's only one way to influence big power decisions. That has to be fundamentally shifted. And it's one thing that the Scottish government can do to shift the narrative and transform the culture, even over the short term. And that's be a lot more aggressive when it comes to promoting what little it can do around the world and demonstrate to its citizens the ability for Scotland to be a voice on the international stage. And the Scottish government did announce last year a whole range of new uh, embassies and international institutional connections that they're setting up of course, there are business hubs, especially focusing on Europe, with a new Berlin business hub. But this has to be bigger. The scope has to be far more radical. Consider the Catalans, who have their institutes and embassies all around the world, uh, promoting Catalan culture, uh, forging new business ties, independent of Spain. The Scottish government has to be a lot more aggressive, not only in the setting up of separate hubs, but also in promoting it to people in Scotland, 
to developing a conversation and debate in Scotland over what it means to be a geopolitical player, the Scottish Tories and their neglect of Brexit relies on a sense of complacency, an idea that we're just not good enough, regardless of whether we're pro-independence or pro-union, whether we're SNP, Labour, Scottish Greens, Lib Dems or Tories. A sense that Scotland has to be a junior partner and that the only way to effect change is through force. It's time to, uh, for us to really push for this idea of a national conversation. Last month I attended the British Foreign Policy Group. Emily Thornbury was there in her capacity as Shadow Foreign Secretary for the Labour Party and it was really a tawdry affair with Scotland being pandered to. A little bit of love bombing here and a little bit of mention of Scotland as a uh, seller of shortbread and whisky. But Scotland has to be more in terms of its international capacity. It's time for all parties to step up in terms of getting Scotland on the international stage and learning from countries outside Europe as well. That focus beyond Europe, not in a UKIP sense of bringing together the Commonwealth in an Empire 2.0, but honest conversations and new links regarding culture, innovation, renewable energy has to be the aim. When Scotland's Tories would rather tweet about Bake Off or write op-eds in the Scotsman talking about how the SNP are not running the Scottish economy as it should be, but neglect to mention anything about Brexit assessments or impact reports, we have to realise that actually this isn't a desperate desire to be malign. This comes from a fundamental lack of imagination. It's time for Scottish civil society as well as all other parties to begin that conversation about defending Scotland's interests and being a lot more aggressive and not being afraid to clash with the UK government on a regular basis with regards to Scotland's interest internationally. Time to forge new links not only with our European partners but with nations all around the world who have a positive view of Scotland, who understand Scotland's questionable past as part of the Union but also have hopes that Scotland will behave and act in a very different way for the future. Thinking about opportunities with regards to financial tech when it comes to the Gulf or countries in the North Africa and the Middle East who want uh, technical help when it comes to uh, solar power or wind energy. The biggest problem from the perspective of the Scottish Tory neglect when it comes to Brexit and international affairs or an international vision is not so much the denigration of Scotland or the dislike of Scotland at all, but rather the idea that Scotland doesn't exist. Scotland's the geopolitical actor, a lack of imagination and a lack of existence. It's time that we change that. Mm -hmm.